Hey guys, uh, before we get started with today's show, I got to tell you about a couple really cool websites that I think you guys are going to really love, and I know you want to get onto the show, so I'll keep this really quick. The first website is called Extrema Cookware, and it's where Kate and I get all of our cookware, saucepans, and all kinds of stuff to cook with. It's made out of natural clays, and it's a non-toxic, chemical-free, heavy metal-free it's the best cookware. If you guys are looking to reduce your exposures to heavy metals and toxins and chemicals that come up through your cookware into your food through high heat, check out Extrema. It's the best stuff out there. I'm telling you guys, um, go onto their website and look at all their glassware, bakeware, cookware, dinnerware, storage, tea, utensils, and all kinds of really cool stuff at Extrema. So if you go to ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash Extrema, or there'll be a link to today's show, which is ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash 419. Go over there, check it out. I think you're going to really love the products that they have there. And Kate and I have a bunch of their stuff, and we're slowly migrating all of our cookware over to Extrema to avoid toxins and heavy metals. And the show is also brought to you by our good friend, Mr. Daniel Vitalis over at SirThrival.com. They have some really cool stuff. I'm just, I'm really addicted to a lot of their stuff. I, I hate to say it, but I am. I really love their immortal velvet, their deer velvet antler, and their pine pollen in tincture form for hormonal health, and um, their dual extraction and grape alcohol and myron glass, super high potency, all organic, 100% organic. They also have colostrum. They have, let's see what else they have, elk velvet and um, the deer velvet and the reishi and the shaga, which are also dual extraction mushrooms um, where they do the alcohol extract as well as the water and the boiling extract. Then they combine them together uh, in a grape alcohol, which is organic grape alcohol. So it's, it's all 100% organic. This is powerful. These are powerful, powerful products. So go over and check them out. ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash Thrival for hormonal health. The colostrum is really amazing for your immune system and building really, really good digestion and sealing the gut. All kinds of good stuff over at Thrival. So go check them out. ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash Thrival. Or if you can't remember that, just go to our show page here, ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash 419. And all of these things are available in our store as well. All right. So there you go. Hope you enjoy those products. And I hope you enjoy this show, episode 419. Got it? Are we on? We're on. We are on. I just dropped. <laughs> We're on. When are we not on? Oh, uh, what? <laughs> when are we not on? We're on fire this morning. That's right. I, That's I what sh- we are. I showed you a couple videos that... Um, Sparked me up. Got you all riled up there, didn't I, Miss Baby Kate? Got me so riled up, I dropped our, uh, our notebook here, but I'm back on. I'm going to be taking notes for the good people. Episode 419 here of Extreme Health Radio. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We really appreciate that so much. we got a great show for you today. Uh, today's uh, leap year, right? Is that the deal? Today, So today doesn't exist in the future when people are watching this, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Yeah, February 29th. That's right. There's always only 28 days in February. Today's the 29th. Can you believe that? Yeah, crazy. So today's a free day. Like Today's a day that like whatever happens is like extra. It's like gravy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know what? I, I felt really silly this morning. Um, a couple shows back, I think it was episode four. Ah, it was a free for all that we had, uh-huh. and we just talked a lot about spirituality and, and um, oh, Christianity. What episode was 413. that? Four thirteen. The one that's uh, the quite infamous. Interesting. The infamous four thirteen. That was the infamous four thirteen. I we got so much flack for that. I know. Was or was it four thirteen? Let me take I a look. I don't know. But either way, I remember reading on that um, on that show um, a passage from my daily uh, book that I read called "Streams in the Desert." Is it four oh, thirteen? I'm um, taking a look. Okay, here. and uh, I remember seeing the cover, and I felt now I feel really stupid because it says three hundred and sixty six daily devotionals or something. Oh yeah, and I made and I was laughing. I've never seen three sixty six, of course, because today I went on February 29th there, so it oh, makes sense yeah, about the leap year. I guess when I'm in, <laughs> it's hard to uh, when you're on you know, the microphone speaking and talking about something you don't really think with your yeah full, <laughs> full capacity. Uh, capacity. So I felt yeah. really silly about that. So now I understand this whole 
366 leap year. So what are your... Um, happy leap year. Happy leap year. Yeah, that's right. February 29th, 2016. Right. Episode 419. It's so fun to write February 29th. I know. We never get a chance to do that. Um, you're fired up today. I am fired up. You showed me some pretty disturbing... Videos. Footage. <laughs> um, right before this show on this... Uh, well, I'm going to say a mess of a... <laughs> a mess of a political system. <laughs> of a political system. <clears throat> um Regardless of what anybody thinks about anyone, everyone can have their own opinion about who's running and stuff. But uh, I'm just appalled by the. I'm, I'm in sheer horror right now about something you've showed me. Where, where did you find that video? Uh, I got them off. I got them off Facebook. But the problem is that it's. Um, I didn't post them to our Extreme Health Radio thing because it's like it's eh, more political, right? But in a sense, it all. I mean, in my, in my opinion. Health is, is, is totally holistic. Everything affects your health, whether it's politics or any driving, anything. It all mm-hmm. affects your health. But I, I just thought, ah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to post it on our Facebook site. But so I just have them on my computer. And I thought, ah, I need to showcase one of these days. And I was just about ready to delete them. And then I'm like, ah, oh, I'll show them to you before I delete them. And now you're all fired. You got me fired up, up man. <laughs> First of all, I have to say, I, good uh, call, good call on the not posting on the Facebook because that's why I dropped off my personal Facebook pretty much is because I'm, I'm just so tired when elections come around. Oh, I'm yeah. so tired of people's political rants. And mm-hmm. I went on a walk the other day on a beach walk with a friend who I want to <laughs> kind of share that story a little later. But, mm-hmm. um, she was saying the same reason, um, her husband rarely posts and she's not even on, but she said, you know, getting these, these thumbs up, these likes, People read like the first four words of whatever post about whatever candidate about whatever's going on, and they just hit like. Like uh-huh. nobody does their own research. I'm I'm guilty of that too. So I just thought I'm taking myself out of the running. I'll de- I'll decide what I want to read when, and, I, and it's not going to get a bunch of likes just because right. that person's my friend and I'm agreeing with everybody. That's what she was saying. Facebook makes you agree with things that you know nothing about. Just because you want to support people that, that are like. your friends on Facebook, yeah, that you already like. that I back you on that, and I yeah. and half the time that we hit like or we I have hit like in the past, I don't know, but you're right. She was totally right. I like that person. I value mostly what they say, so I I like I hit a stupid little button that puts a little thumbs up on something I have no qualifications to even comment on until I've read that whole article mm-hmm. and do some other deeper research to match against. Well, you know, weird, that might not even be true. I don't know. The bizarre thing, too, is that um, uh, people that post that stuff, their, <clears throat> excuse me, like self-esteem is is sort of tied up in how many likes they get. Right. And that's just totally bizarre as well. Where, you know, you have, um, I watched something recently um, about this, a news story about this girl who was, what was it? It was this girl who prevented... A, a stalker kind of a situation and this guy had ended up killing other people and he was um, stalking this girl and mm. she thought he was somebody else and they were communicating on some face uh, Facebook Social or something like that thing. and you know she was just talking about how like her whole her whole thing is she just loves to get, you know take selfies and wow. you know she's just you know a 17 year old girl and she takes selfies and she wants to get all these likes and I think it's just such a bizarre culture that we live in you know, you have the the people posting stuff, and they their self worth is tied up in whether or not they get a like. Mm. Isn't that weird? What happened to us? What? Where where do we go wrong? I feel like when you boil it down, <laughs> like what what happened? Let, let's boil it down yeah. to like bare bones. It's pretty disturbing. Mm-hmm. I think that um, I don't know. It's so easy to just get caught up in the everydayness of it all. That when you really <laughs> step back and look at what's going on, it's pretty disturbing. It's pretty bad. People are basing their whole self worth off a bunch of little thumbs up uh, icons, or mm-hmm. um, how many how many texts they get in a day. It's it's a pretty sad state of affairs. So, what was your favorite video about the Donald Trump video that we just? Uh, oh my lord! Ordered? I feel like if <laughs> lordy, lordy lordy, sweet lordy. sassy molasses. That calls for a, a sweet sassy right there. Yeah. Um. No matter what people think of him, this isn't a political statement I'm making. Right. But watching these videos that we just watched on him. Basically, for the people listening right now, it, it it captures how much fun he pokes at people, and I don't think that's a new everyone aha that. to everyone. But yeah. um, everyone. you know, pointing out—I mean, people that we'd like to make fun of as well, but we don't because it's rude mm-hmm. and it's it's in poor taste. I just have a really big problem with somebody making it this high. Um, you know. 
this high what do you say like this so high the on the rankings to the level he's got to the level he's become by just being an ass he's yeah. so he's so rude mm-hmm. and it, it watching that just disgusts me and i feel like it's the kind of thing what you just said like we're all you know obsessed with this culture of how many likes we get and basing off basing our uh, self-worth off of things that just didn't even exist 10 years ago or mm-hmm. um to see somebody like that though and it, it made me want to cry cuz i'm just horrified that if that's what we've become as a culture mm-hmm. um <laughs> it's terrifying yeah i think that people you know people listening to this might think oh well they're they're uh you know well they're obviously democrat then or they're obviously libertarian and they want to put us into a box but you know it's like for me i'm just getting out of the entire game altogether i think the whole thing is a sham uh, libertarian, republicanism, Democrat. I think the whole thing is outdated. Um, it's just completely irrelevant. Uh, these people up there that think that they're talking for the people. Mm. I mean, Donald Trump's got billions of dollars. How is he speaking for anybody? And plus, when you become a president, you don't even have any jurisdiction except for, you know, three and a half or four square or eight square miles that is Washington, um, Washington DC, DC right. proper. And right. so it's like, you know, people just don't realize that these people are just a president of a corporation. And so I just watch this dog and pony show. And what I see when I see uh, Donald Trump, you know, I just see a lack of spiritual. Yeah. You know, you don't see even with any of them. You don't Does he see have a spirit. <laughs> Does Man, he even have a spirit? I'm, like I've got a message to David Icke on that. <laughs> and he'll let me know if he's a reptilian. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. He's going to let me know if he's a reptile. Oh. But I just see a lack of spirituality, like the whole thing. I, I'm not going to vote. No way. I don't vote. This is ridiculous. That's this fine whole- if people do. I'm not voting. I think it's, it's, it is. It was like watching, uh, not only is he just a despicable human being, in my opinion, and mm-hmm. making fun of people is just not a way to be popular. Uh, and it's sad that for some reason he is elevated to a position of power that people think he's funny and entertaining and a great businessman. And I'm not knocking great his, business guy. his bounce back. Sure, Although he was handed a million dollars at, you know, by his rich fathers to get started. So a little bit of a different. Yeah, and a million Story. dollars back in nineteen mid sixties was mm. probably five million dollars now. So yeah. it's a little different. So yeah, it's a little. It's a little bit different of a journey, is yeah. what we can rightfully say. But <clears throat> I think you asked me, what, no matter what we think of Donald Trump or anybody else running, and the horrifying videos of him just being horrible, horrible to people and and just tearing them apart. How? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I think that you asked me. <laughs> well, you asked me a really interesting question right before we started. You said, "What?" Because I'm like, I want to send this video to everyone we know, you know, all all our family members, people that, you know, they might not be big Trump fans, but that looks like that's our our representative for the Republican for Party. For the Republican Party, yeah. Um, and you said something interesting. You said, what would this do if your dad saw it? Because da- you said, you know, people like your dad, my dad, they're very staunch Republicans, right. uh, you know, very on the side of, um, you know, Christian uh, right wing, right wing, all that, yeah, all that, whatever. You know, I paint a picture, but you know, and that's fine. But I don't think my dad personally is a big Trump fan. You know, yeah. What's he um, gonna do? So you said, what is he gonna do? And the first thing that came to my mind was, this is great. I hope so many people that have been like, I hope, and what I think of is um, a motivational. Sp- talk I heard Elliot Hulse do on my iPod and mm-hmm. I was on my on a retreat getaway by myself this last week for four days or whatever and I feel like he said something about I mean and uh, whatever I can say whatever I want right on the show it's not it's it's a family but it, it, I Elliot want. Hulse is getting all fired up and he said he's encouraging everyone to create their own personal shit storm do you remember that yeah he's yes, like yes, create yes. a situation in which you're gonna have to face these hard, hard things create, like, don't wait for the shit storm to hit you. Go mm-hmm. out and create your own. Right. And I thought, wow. For, so he for, was talking about intentionally putting yourself in a position where you have to, you have to sh- face your fears and take a risk, right? Exactly. Yeah. You have to face your fears, take a risk. And in this case, I'm like, wow, everybody who's, you know, this Trump thing or whatever is going to happen is going to throw people's whole worlds apart. It's awesome because they're going to have to, for the first time, put themselves in a position to deal with what they believe, who, you know, like, basically, if Trump gets in, and that's everything anti that they've ever been, but he's the only Republican, Republican, but he's an idiot, or he's a jerk, or he's whatever, like, 
they're going to have to deal with that. And that actually excites me because I feel like I've had to do that in the last few years on a spiritual level, the spiritual, like I even call it kind of a spiritual crisis because Uh you reach this point where everything leading up into this moment has looked like something. And then over on the, on the other side, you have all this stuff kind of trickling in and it's meeting in the middle and you realize, Oh crap. Like there is a lot of truth over here that I never saw before and, and I'm having that? it's creating a, literally is creating a storm mm-hmm. and it, you, you're right <laughs> in the middle of it and it's swirling around you like a tornado and you're all, you're thinking I have to I put myself in this I open myself up to it and I'm so glad I did I'll never forget when um, Natalie Maines from the Dixie Chicks oh yeah spoke out about President Bush a long time ago at a concert and most people know that she just got ram what do you say that ram 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 But, you know, she spoke out for something and uh, years later on a documentary that was so good. Shut up and sing the documentary. That's a good one. They asked her, they, you know, they said, would you, would you take back what you said? And she said, absolutely not. Like I spoke my truth and it's, it it completely ruined my career, Mm -hmm. but what it's catapulted me into on a spiritual level, you can tell that chick has done some work. Mm Mm-hmm. She's really, and now she, you know, she's not going to ever be the popular, as popular probably as she ever was. And, you know, a lot of people told her not to speak out on politics and Mm -hmm. that was none of her business. And, you know, it might have not been a smart business move on her part. Horrible business move. But But who cares? But you can't, you can't. She was true to herself. Yeah. You can't just be silent and and not speak what you know to be true because you're afraid of someone else's opinion. It's just like the same thing that happened when we released episode 413. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were talking about Christianity. Now I mentioned this in our, in one of our other shows as well. We we're just talking about the, how Christianity is just so bizarre. Right. It's just such the a bizarre. The stories are so strange. The stories are strange. The right. whole, the whole thing is just nuts. Right. Um, and someone got upset who was a, a supporter of our show and they decided to pull their donations. But I just felt <laughs> like, you know what? It's, you know, we weren't saying that Christianity wasn't true. It's just that it's just weird. It's right. And we're saying that like, you know, a lot of people think that, um, you know, Christianity is normal and chakras and, and balance and, and balancing your, your energy fields and all this stuff and meditation is abnormal mm-hmm. is weird. Right. And so my point was, you know, what? it's just, it's not, it's all bizarre. It's all strange. It's all weird. It's all nuts. It's all crazy. None of it makes any sense. Um, and some, it could all be true or could all not be true. Who knows? But like, right. you know, it's not, it's, I wasn't saying that Christianity is false and I hate Christians and I hate Christianity. I was just saying it's just as weird as everything else. Right. Let's just be honest. It's right. just as weird as everything else. <laughs> um, and someone pulled their, their donations and got very upset with me for saying that because they thought they had a nice label of us and thought we were Christian. Um, and I, I wasn't saying anything about Christianity other than it's just bizarre. Right. Um, and so it, your point is that we need to speak our, our truth. We need to speak up. And that used to bother you know? me, to be honest. That, that sentence <laughs> bothered me. Speak your truth. And I always thought, you know, in the, in the myopic world I grew up in. Uh-huh. So can I say myopic? Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's, a good, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good word. Say it. But I feel like in that world I grew up in... Um, Things like that were just very frowned upon. Sentences like that were very uh, all-inclusive, <laughs> which I wasn't brought up to be an all-inclusive kind of a gal. You know, it's right. like us against them or whoever's out there. Like, we're the right ones. So even something like that bothered me, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't like sentences. Now I'm like, gosh, find, speak your truth, find your truth. Uh, it might sound airy-fairy. It might sound new age. It might be whatever label people want to put on it. But in general, it's, it's becoming more apparent that that is true, you know? So what do people do for, because I'm not going to vote for these, these crazy people. I know. They're not even they're part not, of my reality. They're not part of my reality. Um, they're not a part of my day-to-day existence. And, uh. You know, if you want to learn more about how the government really works, go, go to a website called creditorsandcommerce.com and you'll learn about the economics uh, and the contractual nature that is our current system. And people think that, um, you know, p- politicians are somehow going to affect their lives when in actuality everything's commerce and everything is based on contract law mm. and everything's based on jurisdiction. And these people have no bearing on anything. Um, and so, 
you know, why would I care who, who is the president of Coca-Cola? Right. Makes he doesn't sense. care about you. No, he doesn't care about me. And Coca-Cola <laughs> is just a private company, which is the same thing as what the United States is. And, and so, so anyway, I just look at this whole dog and pony show. Yeah. Uh, so what, what do we do then? Do like, what's the solution? Mm. Well, I mean, when I watched that video, I got so fired up. I'm like, if, if this is what we've been <clears throat> boiled down to, and this is the ugliness that is our country, <laughs> uh-huh. in my opinion, um, my first reaction is I'm out of here. Like, I don't want to <laughs> be here. I don't want to. This is shameful. Right. The Super these, shameful to me. People think these politicians are are part of the leaders of our country, right? And what a yeah. shameful thing. And all they're doing, I mean, we watched... Carpet an, bombing. Yeah, we watched another one on just these politicians saying, we don't care. We're going to just level these people. We're carpet bombing the hell out of these <laughs> innocent people. It's so it's it's horrifying. It's horrifying. I, I'm horrified. That's how I feel. And these I, were Democrats and Republicans saying there's, this. No, there's right. no they're all the same. same they work head. for the same corporations. Right. Same they, talking head. Same puppet. Yeah. I just I can't stand. I mean I I don't want to leave an area I love and my family I love, but I can't stand for this. So you know I, I know we can live within a country and not have to like it or you know be able to make our own opinion to to piece out of the system to mm-hmm. an extent, but. Uh, overall, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it goes back to wherever you go, whatever country you're in. I mean, there's going to be issues. There's going to be issues, and we're not free. We're mm-hmm. we're just not. As long as we're in the human body, we're never going to be free. Free. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What's your take on it? Like, what does it make you? Does it make you just want to tune out and drop out altogether? Of just the whole. Well, you know, I feel political rat race. <laughs> yeah, I feel I've gotten off Facebook. I use Facebook for Extreme Health Radio, obviously. Um, and I've, I've gotten off of Facebook altogether. I follow a bunch of different pages on Facebook. So I like to see what's, what they're saying about stuff. But I can say for one, the first thing I'd say is I'm just super glad that I don't follow any of that stuff. I don't read the news. I don't, uh, watch YouTube videos. I mean, this is the first video I've seen on, on politics, I think, so far. This whole election season. And I think getting out of that whole matrix of negativity and, weird, bizarre lack of spirituality and lack of growth and pompousness and, and just not being, not letting that energy get into your body. I think that's the step number one for me is mm-hmm. to, is to not expose my psyche, my energy field. Like we're just talking, we just saw this thing on Super Soul Sunday with that. Uh, what was that guy's name? Rob Bell. Rob Bell. Yeah. And he was talking about marriage and stuff with, and he was talking about his energy fields that, that you have that you set up with your partner and you know um part of the energy field is what you're letting in and the first thing that I'm so glad that I just stopped doing is watching or paying any attention to these people because <laughs> I I can't if I if I get involved with that stuff it makes you, it makes you angry I feel like it literally makes my blood Boil in my body. Yeah, I feel like it, it makes it, you angry and then it makes, makes you my sad. Heart race and then you want to cry. Yeah, you want to, you're just so sad for the human race that these people right. are part. So, you know, why would I want to carry an, ang- uh, an, an energy of anger and sadness? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, then I'm labeling them as bad people. And then it, it causes this whole th- uh, lack of spiritual mentality, I think, of saying that these are all part of me as well. They're just representing a, a shadow side of me that I don't like. Right. And so I start getting into comparisons and judgments and labels and all that stuff. So not exposing myself to that energy, I think, is step number one. Um, and that's just from watching the, like, that could be from watching a, a five-minute news clip. Oh, yeah. Isn't that wild? What what our minds and our spirits and our bodies are capable of, like, reacting? Oh, it's insane. How they're capable of reacting to something so seemingly innocuous. I know. Is that the right word? Yeah. Seemingly not. I mean, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I mean, you could go somewhere else. You could go, um, but every country, like you said, is going to have their issues. Every country is going to be a problem. Right. So where do you go? Um, is it wise to just leave the country like Dr. Mark Circus, one of our guests, he just had enough and now he's living in Brazil. Um, is that wise or what do you do? Mm. You know, or do you just continue to, not fight because you never want to fight, but continue to um, breathe into existence 
uh, you know, your own creation mm. that gives some kind of beauty to your world. Maybe that's the answer. Mm. You know, I part of me does want to leave though. Yeah, you know, but because I, I see what you mean, and I, I've, <clears throat> I've become a lot more peaceful in my internal environment by piecing out of a bunch of other things and opting out of, um, the rat race to some extent. But I wonder if you reach a point where you're just done like yeah that's great and nothing really you know bothers you and you're pe- you have peace within right mm-hmm. but then at some point you just hate your surroundings i mean you can still be sometimes the answer is just to get out i think at some point you know but it's not like mm-hmm. the whole country can mass exodus and go somewhere else i mean i know it has to be the peace within i know that that's the the real truth in this but mm-hmm. yeah i mean i could see a why Dr. Circus or people like him would just hit a point. Because some people would say, done. Oh, he's not, you know, he's, he, he doesn't, he's not a good American, which by the way, study that word. It's a, 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 an interesting word. Um, but, hmm. uh, you know, he's just running away from things and, and, you know, you should stay. Some people say stay and fight or stay and create your own beauty. But sometimes the answer is just to get out. Yeah. You know, whatever your circumstances is, you know, for us, um, <laughs> It's like our apartment. You know, yeah, yeah. It's like our apartment. You know, yeah. at what point do you continue to force yourself to try to be okay with something that you're not okay with? Right. Like a job or a uh, relationship, a relationship, a place where you're living, mm-hmm. um, a situation a you're situation. fed up with. I mean, yeah. anything you're exposed to. At some point, I mean, how long do you let yourself be exposed to that? Because I feel like, I mean, that's a hard question. Yeah. Isn't it? I mean, that's a, that's a deep question because there's a lot of ways you can look at it. You can say, okay, well, um, if you take the sort of new age approach, you can say, well, I created this situation so that I could learn a lesson and I haven't learned my lesson yet because I'm still living in this situation right. or I'm still around this person. Or if you take a Christian approach, you can say, well, God's giving this to me so that I could learn a lesson. Mm-hmm. And he won't give me more than I can handle. Anymore. So it must be that it continues on. It's as well. Right. Right. Or you could say that I'm I'm just creating this for myself now and um, I obviously need to learn something now because I wouldn't have created this reality for myself. Or you could say, um, you could just say, I've been exposed to this thing that I, I, no matter how much spiritual work that I do, it's not something that I can be okay with. Right. And you just, the, the only answer is just to get out. And to be honest, that's the point we've reached. Yeah. I mean... We've six years of trying to do, trying and also achieving and feeling peace, more peace come over us at times. But no, in general, like our our outside elements aren't changing and it just Mm -hmm. continues to bother us. So yeah, like, let's be honest, who wants to live in a loud, obnoxious place? It's like Mm -hmm. not the healthiest place to live when we're trying to work on ourselves. It just isn't conducive to the people we want to be. Yeah. So you got to look at yourself and look at who you are and what's happening to you and who you want to become and see, you know, does this relationship or does this job or does this food or does this diet or does this um, life uh, situation support where I'm going and what I want to be and look at your life now and say, is it having an effect on me? And you can say, well, well, you know, I, I need to learn these lessons or you could just get out. Yeah. I think that sometimes you just got to To be like, honest, and I, I don't blame people. I don't, I don't think, I don't look at them like they're weak links or um, they've given up. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes that's just awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit jealous of people who up and go or, you know, whatever, whether it's a physical move or a emotional well-being move, you know, I don't know. Oh gosh. I know it's a tr- it's a tricky thing because you look at like our current situation here, and you mean in America or in our house? No, in our home here, mm-hmm. and it's just you know we are in a in a neighborhood that's not the best neighborhood, and we're sort of surrounded by people that aren't going anywhere, mm. and people in our life. Um, it's just a weird energetic drainage that happens here, and so you know if we were to stay here, I feel like it would be. A vortex, like it would suck us into. That's the word that keeps coming to my mind. Really? Yeah, I was going to say a slum vortex. That's what I feel like. It, it's 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 not it, only bringing us down. I feel like it's sucking us in and then bringing us down. Mm-hmm. It's like kick you while you're down. <laughs> yeah, it feels similar to you know like the kid in Harlem who's trying to make it out of the ghetto. Mm. And if you're in a job like that, or you're in a relationship like that, or you're eating food that's causing you to to be that way. 
at some point you got to just say, you know what? I'm done with the spiritual lessons. I just need to get the hell out of here. Right. I need to get out. And that in itself could be a spiritual lesson too. You know, totally. what you're willing to, what your standards are and what you're willing to, to put up with. Because sometimes this is just in my own, my, from my own experience, you can't do enough spiritual work to change an outer situation. Mm-hmm. Right. You can't. Right. You know, so uh-huh. I, at some point, I feel like things would never change. Things would never change if I stayed, if I kept choosing to stay in that situation. Mm-hmm. It would be like this till change. I, you know, and then people say, well, change is inevitable. Change is the, the flow of life. Things are always changing. Nothing can stay the same. And that might be true. I mean, say we just decided to stay in this apartment for the next 20 years and then the landlord died and it got sold and we were forced to move. Sure. I mean, mm-hmm. change happens and I get that. But as long as we are choosing to stay in this place, we've outlived the possibilities of <laughs> the outer world around us being any different. It's going to be the same struggles as long right. as we choose to be here. Right. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes I just throw up my hands and go, no, I, I'm going to be the change. I'm going to make the change. Mm-hmm. And if like I didn't. Gandhi said, be the change. Be the change. Sometimes change. it's not just yeah. internal. Sometimes it's external. Be the change. Do something different. Right. I mean, you, you know people and, you know, we've all known people that are in relationships that are just damaging spiritually, damaging emotionally. And what do they do? They keep holding on they because stand. they don't have any self worth, right? To be the change and, and make a difference and do something different. Absolutely. And so the same thing happens too with the, the diet people eat. They don't have self worth. So they don't eat a diet that's going to facilitate the mission they're on. Mm. You know, and well, I mean, that was like me with quitting the salon. Big deal. Really big deal for me mm-hmm. because I could have kept going in that direction, making decent money, you know, keeping us afloat while we live our, you know, go for our dream. Mm-hmm. But I knew too much and I've seen too many hairstylists get cancer and horrible diseases and even a few of them die, you know, and, you know and it, one right now. Yeah. And I know one right now, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's not comfortable, but I could have stayed in that and there would have been nothing wrong with it other than I knew too much and cared too much about myself mm-hmm. and my, like my journey is a journey of health. And is that coming up to support that? Is that coming up under me to support where I'm going? And no, it wasn't. And that was a really hard thing. It's a really hard thing to just jump off the cliff and take a leap of faith. It's very, it's difficult. So you had to determine what's more important my health and the direction my life is going or earning this money right and like alan that, watts said was it, Al, was it him that said we keep going what is it like we keep doing we keep doing the things we keep doing to like what is I, i'm totally gonna butcher oh it. yeah he said why we, <laughs> why would you keep doing things that you hate to do just so that you can keep on do, uh, doing doing living so that you can keep on doing the same things that you hate to begin with. That was it. It's so yeah. hard. That's a hard quote. But yeah. yeah, I've heard it. That really hits you though. Why Why be in the race? Why be in this like ever rolling snowball of things that you don't like or things that just bother you mm-hmm. or something you know could be a better situation yet it keeps gaining momentum and you're just in it. You're well, how do it. you fix that though? Because you, it's so hard. That's why I think like a lot of times with Christianity, it makes it really challenging to look at situations without this sort of foggy, misty haze over your eyes to try to figure out what's really going on. Mm-hmm. And the same thing could be applied with even spirituality or new age or Eastern, whatever. It you look at situations and sometimes you think, okay, well, you know, uh, if I created this situation or there must be a lesson in this for me. And how long do you continue to try to learn a lesson? Mm. You know what I mean? Whether or not you look at it from a Christian perspective and it comes from God, or you look at it from a new age perspective and thinking that you created it before time began, how long do you sit in a situation before you just say, you know what? Enough. Enough. I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm leaving my boyfriend, my girlfriend. I'm leaving this job. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to eat that crap food anymore. I'm not going to work in this job or be exposed to this person anymore. I'm not going to allow this friend to treat me this way. Um, at what point do you s- draw the line and just say, I don't c- care about those spiritual lessons anymore. I'm doing this. I think it might be at the point where the struggle becomes worse than the actual action of breaking 
the cycle. Hey guys, if you've been following our work for any length of time, you know that I'm a big fan of raw food. I did a raw food diet actually from 2003 to 2010, 100%, and I loved it. And raw food is a huge part of my diet, and I just love it. And if you're interested in making healthy, really amazing raw food dishes without spending hours and hours in the kitchen, I would highly recommend checking out a program put together by Russell James called the Raw Chef Program. You could check it out at extremehealthradio.com slash raw chef chef. And I have to say, it's absolutely incredible. I have it. And it's got hundreds of hours of, I think it's hundreds of hours of video, professionally done video along with workbooks and PDF files. And he walks you through how to make the most amazing, delicious raw food meals that don't take forever. Everything from mock pizzas and pasta to ice cream, to cheese, to to fluffy bread, if you can imagine it. It's incredible. So I highly recommend you checking it out. It's uh, You can check it out at Extreme Health radio.com slash raw chef. And I think you are absolutely going to love this program. So check it out now. I have been a huge fan of rebounding for many, many years. And if you want to get in great cardiovascular shape, tone your legs, back and butt and stomach, as well as cleanse your lymphatic system from toxins and chemicals, you just have to start rebounding. It's imperative. And not only will it create endorphins that quickly become addictive to you, but it's very low impact as well. It helps to prevent sicknesses and diseases as well as increase bone density and it flushes toxins from your lymphatic system. It's amazing. And not only that, but it's a ton of fun also. I do it every single day for about 15 minutes. And we found the best rebounder on the market today in the world, bar none. It's called the Bellicon Rebounder. It's the Rolls Royce of rebounders, in my opinion. And let's listen to some of what our guests have had to say about rebounding. Robert von Sarbacher is a health researcher and creator of the Mini B Protocol. And Robert, what's your favorite exercise? Uh, In general, uh, okay, probably one of the number one anti-aging exercises on the planet is is, uh, rebounding. So 15 minutes a day is good for, for that. You can find people who uh, have had thermography scans on cancers, uh, giant tumors, and when they're doing a um, rebounder, it would start spewing out and shrinking right in front of your eyes, the tumor would, as they're on the rebounder. So it's really good for that sort of thing. It's also very good for exercising internal organs. It's the only internal organ exerciser that I know of known to man. Dr. Lindsay Duncan is the CEO and founder of Genesis Today. And what's the best way that you think of to stimulate the lymphatic system of the body? Rebounding is incredible because it's good for the lymphatic system and there's more lymph fluid in the body than there is blood. And the quickest way and the most effective way to get the lymphatic system flowing is through rebounding itself. Yeah, because the lymphatic system can't really detox itself, can it? I think you know. No, the heart, we have the heart, thank you, for pumping blood. And we don't have a heart to pump lymphatic fluid. The only thing that really can pump lymphatic fluid is cardiovascular exercise utilizing the thighs, the thigh muscles. And that's why rebounding and getting a burn in that thigh muscle is so important for the flow and the stimulation of the lymphatic fluid. Wow, and they even put cancer patients on rebounding, don't they? Nutritionists do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but not a conventional doctor. But yeah, I've been learning about rebounding lately. It's quite an amazing thing. Yeah, rebounding is amazing. Health researcher and author of Cancer Step Outside the Box, Ty Bollinger. What do you do in your life to prevent cancer? What do you do to treat cancer? What do you do to prevent it? Rebounding is something that I try to do on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. a little mini trampoline for those people that aren't familiar with the term rebounding, but it's basically just jumping up and down on that little mini tramp. Mm -hmm. What that does is it stimulates the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is one of our primary detoxification systems in our body, and most folks don't stimulate their lymph flow, and so the toxicity in their body builds up because their lymph is not stimulated, and the up-down motion on a rebounder stimulates the lymph flow better than just about any other exercise. So I do that almost almost on a day, probably five days a week, I would say I average doing that. And finally, author and speaker and creator of the Longevity Now program, David Wolf. Do you think the Bellicon is the best rebounder on the market today? Absolutely. I, I was just with the crew in Europe that does the Bellicon Rebounder, which is an incredible 
rebounder. My God, what a machine. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't use metal springs. It uses like flexi ropes. So it's very soft and fun and it's just great to play with. Well, there you have it. The up and down G-force actually stimulates every single cell in your body. It's incredible. And as someone who works out in the gym a lot and does Qigong, I think that the best physical aerobic exercise, in my opinion, is rebounding. It's just absolutely incredible for the human body. And the Bellicon is silent and it comes with a warranty. And you can get them in several different sizes and colors. And some of them have bars that you can hold on to in case you're worried about balance. It's a well worth it investment in your health and in your future. So check them out in our store if you'd like, or you can check out the videos on ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash Bellicon. Again, that's ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash Bellicon. That's B as in boy, E-L-L-I-C-O-N. Say that again? I think it might. that point is when the, the struggle becomes harder and more laborious and and debilitating than the action that's hard to break the cycle. I think the the pendulum swings or the the scale completely something <laughs> happens where it's like you know the scale will start to slowly um what do change. you call that like the weight will change uh-huh. and um people at that point I think that's the moment where they go, This is is what it is and I'm in it forever and I'm just okay watching the scale off the charts just be un like unbalanced. Uh-huh. Or that moment when the person goes, No, like the the struggle. Like here's an example. I did this woman's hair for ten years. Okay. And every time I mean she was an every six week client that came in for color and, and all that. And so we'd have quite a amount of time together. And every time, and she was in the medical field, by the way, um, the most unhealthy person. I mean, I get sad when we go get our blood work done or wherever we show up and just really sad. The mm-hmm. people outside these buildings are smoking, and, know. you know, cell phones to the ear and overweight and just look like miserable people. It just bums mm-hmm. me out. But right. um, she's kind of one of those people. And she'd always say, She's well. First of all, she was always yo-yo dieting. You know, she dropped this, gained back. She dropped this, gained back. Um, so you know, and then you saw that you really felt this overriding sense of depression she had in her life. Mm-hmm. Every, I bet there was a very small exception of when she mentioned when she came in that she was going to quit drinking. That this was going to be. I'm going to go out for mimosas with my mom for a birthday, and then I'm done. Oh really? The next time she came in, you know, I I didn't drink for a couple a couple days, and then you know, um, I, my fortieth happened, so we we went out and celebrated, but now I'm done. Yeah. And then the next time it was like, oh, but my daughter's turning twenty one. We're, we're going to go have drinks, and then I'm done because it's every time she'd say like, I know this is killing me, mm-hmm. and I know it's making me fat. I know it's making my de- I'm depressed. She had all these like crazy things happen where you know, like she went in for all these surgeries. She had these mystery illnesses coming up. And she knew it wasn't good for her, even just right. as a typical Western <laughs> medical, you know, in that world. Mm-hmm. She wasn't a doctor, but, you know, she was a nurse or whatever. Um, but it just, I thought, no, this struggle for 10 years, is, you're not going to, you could make the choice. And I hope she did where that scale became too un, un, unweighed. Like it, it just went off the charts. And I thought, gosh, like she's going to reach that point where. She's she's going to give in and just be okay with watching the scale be so un, unbalanced, or she's going to um, the struggle is going to be so much of a nightmare that it's just going to be easier at one point to make that choice and make the change. You know, it's so okay. Does that make sense? So the struggle of what though to make the, the change? the struggle of making the change or struggle of not making the change. I think f- like in her situation, the struggle was is to make the change she's scared of like giving that up because she's so depressed so what what i what it boils down to though is she's miserable at her job and she hates her marriage oh so at what point is it going to be easier for her to decide like the struggle with alcohol for her is so apparent because of these other things and areas of her life Mm -hmm. 
she's going to have to choose, ditch the other areas of her life, make changes, and then it's going to be really easy, for, not easy, it's going to be a lot easier for you to give up that habit of alcohol because she wants to so bad, but she can't. Okay, so she needs to fix the other areas of her life I first. think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Like when the struggle of the underlying things becomes so much heavier than the actual action. Mm-hmm. So at some point, I think she's going to be like, wow, crap, this is going to be horrible to either leave this marriage or quit my job and find something I really want to do. Mm-hmm. But what's worse? I mean, I saw 10 years. I think she's been in that profession for 30. Do you know how she's doing now? Well, this is what's sad. Is la- This is what reminded me of the story. Last night, I was going on to get an address of a friend who had a baby on Facebook, which I hadn't been on you know, very often mm-hmm. recently. And her post was the first one that came up. And it's having drinks with her neighbor and her mom um, for X, Y, and Z occasion. And I go, oh, like... My heart just breaks because I thought this is a cycle. I mean, this is, this is who she is unless she makes a very dramatic decision to change them. Right. And it, it frustrated me so bad. Yeah. I'm like, this is why I'm not on Facebook because I get frustrated because I, when I was in my job that I hated doing hair and stressed out of my mind, I drank a lot more. Mm-hmm. I mean, wine was every night and, yeah. you know, I'm not, ta- I'm not talking like she's a very functioning alcoholic. She has a, you know, she goes to work every day. It doesn't, and it doesn't wreck her professional life. By any means, mm-hmm. but there's a day, you know, I mean, she talk about every night there could be a barely a night when she wouldn't pour herself a few drinks, you know? Wow. I don't know. So does that make sense? Like when you ask that yeah. question, I know that's a long answer. So the, so you have to compare what's going to be more difficult for you to do to make a change or to continue dealing with whatever it is and the consequences of whatever it is that's not working for you in your life. So if it's someone that's eating a, like a diet and they're 600 pounds, mm. You know, what's more difficult to make the change or to continue down all of the struggles that exist as a result of being 600 pounds? Exactly. So you have to weigh that out and say, okay. Um, but you know what's crazy is that it's possible. Like people don't think, you know, I'm 45 years old, I'm 50 years old, I'm 60 years old, I've been married for 30 years and I hate my life and I hate my job and I hate my marriage. I'm out of, I'm, I'm out of shape. I'm overweight. I don't eat well. Um, but it's crazy to me that it's within the realm of possibility that anyone could do anything. That person yeah. who's in that situation could be Joe Cross a year later. Yeah, they <laughs> can go and ch- completely change their diet. They can they can quit their job. They can file bankruptcy if that's possible, or they could do whatever it is: move to another state, move to another country, meet new people, lose weight. I mean, it's it's amazing. People think, oh, I'm I'm stuck in this situation, and we all feel stuck. But within the realm of just looking down on the on the earth and seeing humans running around doing things all day, it's possible for human beings to do anything. Totally, you know, we can all just really make a decision and do something different. Yeah, but it's just it's it's challenging because you're some sort of weird mindset happens that causes you to think I can't do it. I'm stuck. I like I can't do that. I can't eat those foods. You know, you have a friend that will never eat a vegetable. Right. I know people who never had a vegetable in their life. Um. And it's just, it's really kind of bizarre. It's really just a weird thing. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's weird to think that people can actually make changes and, and the people that do really become very motivational to other people. Oh, I know. Right. I mean, you look at, you look at what, what episode was Joe Cross on? I love that guy, but his movies are awesome. Yeah. We'll put, uh, we'll put a link to it. Yeah. Um, But you look at him, yeah, and he he can't stop encouraging people. I mean, mm-hmm. it shows what what he does going around the world, talking to groups of people, just being like, "You can do this. You can mm-hmm. you can lose the weight. You can get fit. You can you can do anything." And you're, it's empowerment to live life again on your terms. Mm-hmm. You can't shut people like that up. Mm-hmm. It's because it's so life transforming. And I feel like, oh, like something in people does. Probably like people's hormones are all whacked out and um, chemicals chemicals are, are in play there and it's just, it's hard for them to stay motivated. I mean, self-motivate. That's why I have so much respect for people that are just these self-made, self-motivated mm-hmm. people. Uh, like we watched some video, have you ever posted it to our Facebook of that story of that guy who was um, a disabled war veteran who couldn't even walk? Oh yeah, the And he yoga started guy. doing yoga. Yeah. And it, literally, he was determined and at the end of the film, I 
Oh, I won't say in case people want to watch it. Can you put a link to that? Yeah, I'll put a link to the, the yoga video. The yoga video. But yeah, it's on our Facebook site. You can you do want. anything. I, I feel like, and then people watch that and we're all pumped up and stuff, but then it's like, we don't go make the changes because we're like, well, that was for him. He's yeah. He's got more this or that than I, but maybe he just has more hormone. Maybe his hormones are better, so he's more motivated or mm-hmm. his testosterone's a little higher. So it's just funny what demotivates us. Mm-hmm. Well, that's sort of going back to what, we were talking about before is just what are you filling your psyche up with? What are you watching? What are you learning? What are you reading or listening to? That's part of what I mean. I know people who, from the moment they get up, they turn on you know the news on the radio and they will listen to the news all day long. Mm. And mm. it's not even the news, you know what I mean? And you're just filling your mind with just endless amounts of need, of purposeless information that's negative, and so. You don't feel like you have the power to do anything in your life if you're constantly sort of uh, putting that stuff in your mind. Yeah, you're right. You Negativity know? and fear. and Yeah. So going back to like what we're talking about, being okay with a certain situation and looking at it from a spiritual perspective or not, um, you know, sometimes I think, well, maybe I created this situation in my life, whether it's a a a poor health or a bad relationship or a bad place of living or a bad job. Maybe I created that situation not to learn whatever lessons that are happening in the time of of not liking it, but maybe I created that situation in order for me to get in touch with my intuition to know what I like and what I don't like Mm. so that I will make a change. So maybe the whole thing isn't about like, Oh, I need like, like a perfect example is for us in our apartment here it's very loud and very noisy. And so I keep telling myself, okay, just breathe deep. Uh, if we're trying to read a book and in, in a room and there's semis that go by and uh, fire trucks, you know, tr- okay, be okay. And just kind of do the Eckhart Tolle thing and like just breathe deep and, and be okay. And this is a lesson. And indeed it is a lesson. But maybe the reason why we, we have this place is so that we will learn what we like and what we don't like. And we'll just have the guts. The lesson is, is making the change to go somewhere else. Maybe that's the lesson. The, the, Just the physical, act of courage and bravery and choosing. Choosing to do something making different. Making a choice. Maybe that's all it's about. And so I look at it like, okay, if that's the case, then we, we've been here for six years. We spent five too many here. Mm-hmm. You know, because right. we could have done this a year into it. But all the while we're like, no, I need to be okay. I need to, you know, go deeper and, and be okay with noisiness and, and and being okay with the chaos and, and trying to find a center place of peace and all this stuff. It shouldn't matter about my outside circumstances. Yeah, right? Maybe the whole thing is just, hey, do you have enough um, desire or will to, in your own heart to yeah. make a change? And I feel like it poses the question, hey, are you happy? <clears throat> hey, do you like it? Why can't we have likes? I mean, the spiritual journey can also be about like it doesn't have to be like raking you over the coals beating and making <laughs> beating you up. Yeah. Are you happy? Does your soul feel happy here? Are uh-huh. you, you know, when I say here, I mean anything in life with mm-hmm. this situation. Are you? How do you feel? Mm-hmm. Things. I'm really affected by. I'm a sensory person. I'm mm-hmm. a you know. I, I, my surroundings need to be peaceful and I, they need to be beautiful for me to feel at my best. So why so, can't the spiritual lesson be something as normal and easy as like these are my preferences? Right. This is who this is who I am. And sure, can I put up with other stuff? Yeah. Can I? Can I? Do I need to? Do I need to? Yeah. Right. Is this is this a lesson? What if what if we've been telling ourselves the whole time? Well, we need to be okay with going within and and learning this lesson. With that, it hasn't even been the case. It's just that. Do you have enough balls to make a decision? Right. Will you get up off the couch and stop eating those foods? Or will you break up with that girlfriend or boyfriend because they're not good for you? You know, that's, if you do that, then you learn your lesson and everything in between was just smoke and mirrors. Totally, totally. You know? What a weird thing. It's just hard. It's just so weird. Cause that's why I was saying about like, you know, when you apply a layer like mayonnaise on bread of spirituality, whether it's Christian or new age or any way you look at it on top of physical normal life, it creates this weird like way of looking at the world that confuses you. It makes you so confused. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause there's all these deeper layers to seemingly just normal things. Like I don't like loud noise and I want to move somewhere else. Why can't I just do that? Mm-hmm. And so it makes it, it, it seems so, so convoluted, con- right? Very murky. It's just weird. So strange. 
why we do that as humans, you know? I don't know. <laughs> what was it? Somebody, I forget. I've probably said this on one of the shows, but somebody wrote us an email saying that we seemed very confused. I think it was about episode, again, 413. Oh, yeah. That we Gosh. seemed very confused um, spiritually, and we seemed like we were just floundering and figuring stuff out. And that's true. We, who isn't? Fig- if you're not figuring out, you got a problem. But my response to that, I think I even said, was my only conf- Okay, sure, I'm confused, but I'm confused why you're not confused. Yeah. People who aren't confused confuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't yeah. this what we're... Anyone who is not confused really is, um, I think, in a sad state of, of being. Yeah. It's bad. Because if they're not, and they, they're so set and strong and know everything and they feel completely okay with everything and they have all the answers Mm -hmm. well then you're just delusional in my opinion yeah because how would someone feel like they know all the answers to the life's how could you how could you yeah i mean as far as i know i'm not god so i think Mm -hmm. god resides in all of us but I'm not God. Thank God I'm not God. But I just laugh. I think, wow, I don't want to be friends with somebody who's not confused. I don't want to be, who wants to be friends with a know-it-all or somebody who's so sure about everything because Mm -hmm. those people usually have a rude awakening waiting for them at some Mm -hmm. point. And second of all, that's just not, it's not fun and -hmm. it doesn't seem real. It's just a bunch of judgment. That's not real. It's not real at all. Yeah, it's it's that's really, just judging other people to make yourself feel better about what what conclusions you've come to. Mm-hmm. That's fine if that's your conclusion, but to say that you have it all figured out and that other people seem confused, just I don't know how you can't be confused. Yeah, living in today's world, it's so it's, it's too, very confusing, it's too much. and you have people that think they know it all, and then other people's opinions and these talking heads and friends that feel like they've done research on things, and so you listen to them, and then you realize they're wrong, and then. You know, they're conflicting with so and so, and then all of a sudden you learn this new information that proves everything else that you thought was true to be wrong. <laughs> right. And then, you know, and then you get these people that are coming to your, you know, and s- saying that you're bizarre for being confused. And, you know, and we have the way, and, you know, you sound like you don't know what's, which way's up. Yeah. I mean, think about the confusion. Like we've, you know, in, in the last show that I did by myself, I talked about how the direction of the show is going to be moving more towards, especially on our free for all Fridays, because you and I just kind of talk about life and stuff and health a little bit in there, but we talk about spirituality and, and stuff. And, but then on our regular shows, I'm more interested in finding, uh, you know, talking to people who have got some kind of answers for certain specific problems. I'm kind of done talking about the dietary platitudes and the generalizations about if people should eat paleo or they should eat raw. These are all things that people need to find out for themselves and find out if it works for them. Go do some blood tests, get your levels checked before and after, figure out what works for you. I don't care really what anybody eats. Um, But I was going to say in terms of confusion, do we know what we're supposed to be eating? We don't even know how to feed ourselves. I think we're so hopelessly lost that we seek out these people in any any area of life, whether it's politicians, doctors, lawyers, dietitians, nutritionists, who feel like they have answers because we're so hopelessly lost. Um, mm. This guy, Stephen Jenkinson, says that the great disease of all humanity is um, a feeling of uh, um, isolated homelessness mm. where we don't have a tribe anymore. We're not connected to our elders. We don't have a shaman like we're just listening to um, Elliot Hulse talk about. We don't have a, a, a shaman. We don't have people that we're connected to um, in our life. And our, our ancestors all were immigrants from other countries. And there's something energetically that's lost mm. when our ancestors move halfway around the world and start up and leave their friends and family and come to a new location and strive and struggle. Um, there's, a, there's a breaking off, a severing point of of the energetics of uh, an entire family that gets lost. So I don't think we have any idea of what we're supposed to be eating. Some people are are just hell bent on eating 30 bananas a day and they think that's the best diet. Maybe it is. I don't know. Some people think that eating raw meat is the best thing. And so they espouse that kind of a diet. But I think we're just hopelessly lost in any, in every, if you were to make a little pie chart of all the different slices of life, we're just every single one of them that we think is important. We're just lost. Mm. We don't have any idea. So we seek out people who have answers and then they, but people like us 
I feel like we live in the mystery of things and I love to not have answers. I love to live in the question of, of what's possible and, and, you know, weighing different ideas against each other. And so I, I'm not necessarily as tied to someone like a guru who's going to tell me how life is because I don't think he knows either. I don't think, I don't think all of our guests, God love them all, but I think some of them might be delusional. Mm -hmm. And if they're delusional, but they really do believe what they're saying, then it's truth. Then it's truth for them. It's a reality. Great. And if you're on a healing path, the best thing to be is delusional because you have to believe in what you're doing. If you're walking around living in the mystery like we are and you're trying to heal uh, diabetes or heart disease or cancer, that's not going to be a good place. You need to find something and stick with it and believe it. But I think that it's the great curse of mankind to think that, like we 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 have to look for an, you know people that have answers. Like you said, it's it's crazy to think that you that, that you don't live in that mystery too. What uh, how'd you put it? It's just so great. My, uh, I think what confuses crazy. me <laughs> yeah. is that you're not confused. Yeah. What I'm confused by is that you're not confused. Yeah, that really confuses me. And it's like wow. I know. That's amazing because people feel like they just want to know it all. And if they don't know it all, they want to listen to people who know it all. We don't know anything. I don't know anything. You ask, you call me up and ask me about health. I wouldn't, I can give you some ideas, give some general ideas. I've been studying this since 2013 and every day I get more confused. Since 2013? I'm sorry, 2003. Yeah, I'm like, wow, way longer than that. Yeah. So you're confused. I'm totally confused. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to debate people about whether or not they think vegan is better than paleo. It's fine. I don't whatever know. Whatever you want to eat is fine. You know? If you believe in your own. I think it's 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 loving the questions themselves that mm-hmm. we have to be okay with, and that's a scary place to be, to actually be okay and thriving in that place, don't you think? Mm-hmm. To learn to love the questions themselves. And then to going back to becoming your own guru. You're listening to your own gut. Mm -hmm. I think we're so disconnected. Like that retreat I just went on by myself. It's so, if any, I mean, I get so much from it, but if anything, it recalibrates and resets your. The retreat you just went on? The retreat I just went on. Yeah. Um, It it resets your connection with yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to put it other than, wow, magic seems to live at that place and happen at that place. And I feel so connected with God and it's because I'm intentional about going inward. Everything speaks to you when when you're in that kind of a situation if you let it. Why? Because you're close to nature? I'm still or trying to dis- wrap my mind around it. Is it because you're closer to nature and you've disconnected yourself from technology? Probably. Probably a combination and probably other things too, right? Yeah. Why you feel that a place like that is so magical? Yeah, I think it's because we always have, most people have, I I don't know, a person who probably doesn't have just constant monkey chatter, tape recorders, just voices in their head playing. Your, th- your thoughts are so vast in real life when you're living real life, carpooling and grocery store shopping and working, running around like a crazy person that you can't sort through your thoughts and make sense of them. Mm-hmm. When I'm up there, when I go on a, a soul retreat, it's not that all of a sudden the thoughts that I can compartmentalize them and think through these things. My thoughts actually change and I'm thinking from a higher level. Like I'm th- it's almost like my chattery voice becomes God because I'm quiet. Mm-hmm. So half the stuff, I mean, I had some very strange things happen up there where I wanted to go on this retreat to set the intention of, um, Asking God, who, who do you say I am? Who am I to you? Mm-hmm. I can say till the cows come home what I think I am and what I'm here for and my purpose and stuff. But like my friend Robin always says, like, just, you know, when, when things have been tough and I've, I've gotten a hold of her and said, I don't know what to do. I'm so confused. I'm so this. And I start to give into the confusion, you know, I, the, mm-hmm. like the not being okay with being confused. Right. She says, well, who, who does God say you are? Like, who, who does God say you are? And I go, well, I know a bunch of stuff that he's told me and I'm going to be doing. And, and she goes, no, but who does he say you are? So I was really confused by that. So I went up on this retreat with the intention. And I mean, I read you my list. I sat by a creek and I walked around a labyrinth and I hiked up in the lavender fields and I walked through orange groves and I sat there and ate my lunch amongst lemon trees. And it's, I asked myself, like, 
I opened myself up to the conversation of who am I and the thoughts that came through my head <laughs> were bizarre. Mm. I had thoughts and words that weren't you from almost say, you. are they from me or are they not? Because what is this voice at, at home? It's chatter, chatter, chatter. Do this. Don't forget to call this guy. Make sure you take Write care of this insurance there. thing. Write this email thing. <laughs> yeah. And up there, it's like, <laughs> you are a lion. You are a cow herderess. You are what? And you think, is that my real voice? Yeah. The voice of God or my real true self that's been silenced and it, it changes when I'm in this false reality or am I totally crazy and delusional making this up? Is this, is it because I want to hear it so bad? I'm making my mind make up these words and maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But there's the confusion. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being confused and working through this stuff because I don't know. It's weird though. And it's powerful and profound. I'll tell you that. It's bizarre that you go to a place like that and you just think higher thoughts. Oh. It's just weird, isn't it? It's odd. It's so bizarre because like you said before, when we're here and you're living normal life, you're running to work, you're getting ready to work, you're getting prepared to go to sleep, to go to work, you're... What am I forgetting? What list do I need to make? I mean, I got to do this before work. I got to run this errand to drop the kids off. And after work, I got to run to the grocery store and do this and make dinner. And you never get a chance to just take a breath unless you do some meditation after the kids go to bed or something like that. But it's funny when you get away like that and you just sit and you have all day long to just sort of contemplate and sort of like how Jesus was for 30 days or 40 days in the wilderness. <clears throat> it's almost like if you're um, a helium balloon and you're in a in a room in a house and you're just stuck at the ceiling, you know, that's as high as you can go in, when you're in that room. Hmm. But if you were to remove the ceiling, which is like going and getting away in nature, It's like the balloon just goes as high as it can go, you know, and that's where it's meant to go. But the ceiling of our lives, the ceiling of this day to day mundane, weird stuff. Put a cap on it. Says, no, this is how high you're ever going to go as long as you stay in this room. It draws a line. That is such a good way to view that. Because look at how high a healing balloon could go. What is the potential of, of what you could accomplish or what you could tap into if you're just willing to get away? Like we're talking about Elliot Hulse. What's Maggie doing? Maggie's going crazy over there. She's She's building a nest (laughs) out of a blanket. (laughs) I like what Elliot Hulse was saying about how he has a E-Day. Yeah, that was profound. You know, and that was sort of similar to what you did up in Montecito, but it's... He does it once a week where he sets aside a day for himself. And he's not working. He's not in the gym working out. He's not with his family. He's not doing business. by himself. Not with his kids, not with his wife. He's by himself doing something. And that's just so important. I just think that we're missing so that. So important. I need to start doing that too. I really got to start doing that. I inc- Well, <clears throat> sure. When he said that, it kind of blew my mind because I thought, how can I incorporate? Because I've been so trying to strongly hold on to the retreat mind upon returning home this time. I thought, how do I keep this retreat mind going? Because uh-huh. I'm in this, this flow and this state when I come back. And it's completely evident that I've been with myself and with God, uh-huh. how do I keep that going, you know? So, how do you keep it in the mundane life that we ha- all have? So maybe, I mean, when Elliot Hull said that the other <laughs> night when I was home and I was in the sauna watching that, um, I thought, yeah, a K-Day, how do, how do I make that happen? Mm-hmm. How do I make that happen on a weekly basis? Is that even possible? Is that, um, well, like what, <laughs> I was thinking of the logistics, to be honest, of yeah. that though. Like, what would I have to do? Where do you go? Yeah, like, (laughs) where do I? I can't go down to the beach trail because there's thousands of people. And sure, you're kind of by yourself, but it was different. Like, being on this retreat, I'm up in the hills at a retreat center where I didn't see people. I didn't have to talk to anybody I knew. I didn't have to run into people I knew from high school on the the beach walk. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I mean, do I get in my car and drive up to a hill and climb, you know, hike up there and just stay up there all day? How does Mm -hmm. that look? So, I'm... I don't know, but I think if we could both do that, that Mm -hmm. would be the most awesome thing for ourselves, for our relationships, for our time with really leaning into the voice of God Mm -hmm. directing us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's so important to to build your life in such a way where you can have that kind of situation. Whether or not you do it like a one day a week thing or you every couple months you go, it's the same, you know, energetically it's the same thing as doing a a yearly cleanse. cleanse. It's the same thing yeah. as doing a, a coffee enema once a week. 
It's just it's just a different level. So it's like and then yeah. like, that looks different to everybody, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. For Elliot Hulse, it could be one day a week. For me, I, my my goal is to go away for three to four days every season. Okay, so, so four yeah. times a year. So you're right. Maybe thanks for putting that back in perspective. It doesn't have to be it, a weekly thing. It's different for everybody, but I think it's so important because if you don't have time where you're giving to yourself, like he was talking about, how we have so much pressure in our life to do and accomplish and to be all these the best versions of of every single role that we have and if and and we're just so hard on ourselves for not treating our kids correctly or saying this or that and work demands and kid demands and all this stuff mm-hmm. and if you don't allow if you don't build like pressure release valves within the system it's going to blow it's going to blow mm-hmm. and I think that needs to be on a lot of li- di- uh, different levels. Every now and then you need to get away and to reconnect with your higher self like you did. Mm-hmm. I think every few times a week you got to go to the gym or go for go mountain bike riding or climb a cliff or or go spar in jujitsu or do something where you're energetically punch releasing. Punch a punching bag. Punch do a punching something. Bag. Get rid of negative and, and bad emotions. Louise, hey, mm-hmm. attack your pillows. Punch <clears throat> your pillows. Do something. Yeah. Let it out. Shake it out. Like, like he was talking about the bioenergetics and the, and the dynamic meditation where you're able to release these things and then also doing things on the physical level like coffee enemas and eating a good diet and then energetically doing it like meditation every day but then going away a few times. Man, we have to. In our culture, yeah, it's so we're so twenty four seven, three sixty five with our cell phones and being connected and or three sixty six. Yeah, this year, right? <laughs> Today, connect. It's Leap just, year. I, man, it, it's becoming more and more necessary. I think for people to to yeah to get away and to take care of themselves. On every I level. I completely agree. Spiritually, emotionally, energetically, physically. Everything. And I think you come home, like I came, I come home every time with this, I, my cup is so full and I'm able to, it's like the oxygen mask thing, you know, mm-hmm. put on your own before helping others. <clears throat> I feel able to love better and able to uh, just respond better to mm-hmm. life and to you and to the responsibilities we have and, you know, all this stuff. But I, I, I love the challenge of, Asking myself, what is it that makes me feel the retreat mind? Like that is like, what is it? So I've had to sit the last few days in my journal. What is the question? How do you feel the retreat mind? Like when I come home, I have this retreat way of being about me. My mind is on like, how do I keep the retreat going in my mind? Okay. How do I stay in that sacred place? Uh And I thought, well, on a practical level, what was different on the retreat than it is here? Well, I only checked my cell phone three times a day. Versus three times a minute when I'm in my real life. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, that's something I can change. I have power over that. I either get rid of my cell phone or I keep it off all the time or I change to a different number where f- my family has it and that's about it or I keep it on just when I'm driving so I feel safe or, mm-hmm. you know, certain things like that. I thought, what are the things that can keep me in that place that are doable? Mm-hmm. Um. The other thing was, why did I feel so good? I was walking in nature with no people. And I thought, okay, then I'm going to seek out those places in nature. I went to a contemplative prayer service in a little chapel with a bunch of people. And we sat there for an hour in silence. And and we're, this energy was insane. And it was part of this um, contemplative prayer organization. Well, I got home and I thought... I can look up the contemplative prayer organization and see if there's one near us. Sure enough, there is. Can you I can, write that down? I can attend that. Yeah, oh, sure. I'll put it down. Okay. I can attend those services once a week and bring that retreat mind back to my everyday life. And right. that actually really excites me because in the past I've gone on retreats. I come home. Oh, bummer. It's gone. The mountaintop experience is left up there. I'm back here at sea level and life's different here. So what you have to do is bring some of the things that you can do. You have to. To your regular life, yeah. I have to, personally. Yeah. And it's exciting to me because I think, how, okay, now how can I, how can I implement this? Uh huh. And it, it sounds as silly. I mean, this is, this is true. It made <clears throat> my soul super happy to be hiking up in the hills of Santa Barbara, picking wild jasmine and lavender. I came home. I'm in a field the other day with Maggie <laughs> while she's pooping. And I'm like, oh, I smell this wild jasmine. I look over and it's growing wild down this on this empty lot. I'm like, that I can do. I can go pick that wild jasmine. Yeah. I can bring back the smell that triggers the emotion of being in the retreat space. Nice. I know where there's a, you know, a, a wild um, lavender plant mm-hmm. growing out of control three houses down. 
Mm-hmm. I can go pick some wild lavender and put them in a thing next to my bed. And it's like, I've actually been, this time has changed me. I've come home and I haven't retreated back to old life. I'm still in the retreat space mm-hmm. because I'm doing little things that trigger that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool because essentially all that is, is, is reconnecting with nature, you know, oh, finding it's... silence and being more closely connected to nature. And I think that's part of our problem altogether is that we just, we live such bizarre, weird lives that we're so disconnected from our food, from our, from nature. We're connected to, I think we're really disconnected from our, uh, our intuitive knowing. Mm-hmm. Well, because, that's done by media. Oh yeah. You know, but yeah, you're right. We, we don't know what we want. Well, let me get, can I tell a story really quick? Yeah. A real quick example is, um, intuitive. I'm a pretty intuitive person and I've realized I have this gift as I get older and it's really strange because I think I've always had it, but I'm just rediscovering it in a new way and i'd had a friend on my mind for the last month on and off and i as a friend from grade school oh yeah and i thought wow i really need to call her she's somebody who's a, who's a journeyer she's a pilgrim she's on a soul quest and i feel like we'd have so much in common why don't i reach out to her oh yeah this last is cool time story. i saw her was like three years ago with a bunch of girlfriends from high school so i'm driving up through la on the way to santa barbara and i kept thinking about her i was like gosh i really need to call her when i get back and so I kept putting it off thinking that's somebody I know would be good for my soul because uh-huh. I'm very picky about who I spend time with because I don't have a lot of time like everybody right. else or I don't make t- I don't make time. Yeah. But when I do, who who do I value and who do I want to spend it on and right. with? So yeah, I'm driving through LA and thought there's no more excuses. When I get back from this retreat, I'm going to I'm going to contact her. So I go up to the retreat, I am in my little hermitage. First night I wake up in, in the morning and I had this dream about having twins. It was really mm-hmm. cool. And I had a dream I was pregnant with these twins and we had another wiener dog. It was like a very real kind of like... We had a second like, one? We had a second wiener dog that looked like Maggie's little old boyfriend, uh. Arthur. <laughs> um, but what was weird about that dream is thinking about my friend. She had had twins a couple of years ago and I thought, gosh, it's so weird this, that she keeps coming to mind. You know, yeah. So that dream reminded me again of her. I'm thinking, I really need to reach out to her. So one of the, one of my housemates left, uh, to go on some yoga retreat and we clean up our own rooms and do all the stuff. And she had left and said, I'm leaving. I said, bye. And I look in her room and I thought, Oh, I've, this is a cute room. Like I love it in here. It's totally different than my room because mm-hmm. they're all different in this little house on this hill. And, uh, in each room, there's a book that people write in kind of like a B and B where you can write about your experience or leave a note of encouragement. And mm-hmm. people have some pretty deep, profound stories of things that have happened or what they're going through when they get up there. And wow. so I see the, the book in her room and I thought, wow, I've read my books in my room. Every time I come up here, I read people's stories. I'm going to read this book. So I pick it up. I take it outside with my lunch and I'm sitting in the sun and I turned to the second page and I see our, our city. I see San Clemente, California. And I go, oh. And then I look above it, and it's it's her name. She had signed the end of this writing. And I, <laughs> I my mouth dropped, my jaw dropped. And I thought, this was just of course. one of those. Of course. Of course. And it was like that. I thought, intuitively, I've known I've needed to reach out to her and reconnect with her. Did mm-hmm. I listen? No. Kind of. Did I push it away? Sure. And then is it going to tell me this is somebody you need in your life? Yes, because I feel like God is that much for me mm-hmm. on my side that it was so blatantly obvious. So what did I do? I, I laughed. I read the thing. I thought the house, this is too funny. It was written in 2012 wow. before they had had the baby. She and her husband went up and stayed in this, in this hermitage. And, and I, I literally put my food down, put the book down and went inside, grabbed my phone and texted her and said, do I have a story for you? Do you want to meet up? And she said, yeah. And so we met up last Saturday and went for a three hour reconnect. And, um, of course she laughed and said, isn't that just how God in the universe works? Of like, this was awesome. I've thought about you a lot too. And, um, so that's the wow. thing. When you get out of the chatter, your intuitive mind, the things that we should, I could have paid attention to that a year ago when I started thinking about her, but mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. because I was too in my own head, too disconnected from nature. The voice that kept saying that, I thought, oh, that's just a passing, fleeting thought. But mm-hmm. no, it was like, this person's good for you. This person has is going to add value to your life. This is somebody you could go deep with. Right in your tribe, like I complain, I feel like I don't have a tribe of people who get me, mm-hmm. besides the listeners and things that, you know, but we're spread out. We're not, it's not right here in our home community. Right. And I feel like God said, she's right there. She's like 
two miles away. Like, I'm going to just keep putting her on your heart until you have to react. And wow. it was such a full time that we had together. I left feeling like our walking time was just life changing. It's amazing that we have access. All of us have access. I'm trying to move into more what you live in the dream synchronicity and magic rather than logic, structure and order. You live in the dream synchronicity and magic of life. And I live sort of in between. Yeah. And I go in and out of living like you live, but you live like that all the time. And you have experiences like this every single day. Every time you go for a walk, so you come back with some story. I know. It's, it's, I know. And we could all do that. It's just that we have to figure out how to reconnect with ourselves so that we're connected to a higher source as we're going through mm. the mundane aspects of standing in line at the grocery store or the drudgery of the drudgery of just going to the post office to mail a letter and it's it's you know you're really good at opening up in the process of speaking with people there making friends and connections and and you know i'm not as much like that i'm more reserved i'm quiet i just sort of stand there and kind of mind your own mind my own business and until i do my thing but Living in that way like you live is really cool. Thank you. Because you. you get offered up these these circumstances like this. I mean, what are the chances you've had these bizarre dreams and then she's been on your heart and then you see a, a book? I mean, the chances are one in a million. Well, oh, and this is happened. three hours away from where we live, you know? Yeah, so, it's, it's... And it's one little tiny place in all of the world. It's just, it was too funny. Mm -hmm. Well, I yeah. think I think what happens though, and I know it's just happening with you, I might be more like intuitive and designed that way, but... Even I just appreciate it and I flip out every time something happens. I get so excited. I think the more you appreciate it, the more you just open yourself up to more of it coming. You yeah. get you get excited and I think that tells God like that was cool. Keep them coming. And I think when you start and then he's like, oh, she really liked that. And she responded, well, I'll, I'll give her more of that. That's how I, what I feel like is happening. Mm -hmm. So in the process, we get more excited about watching what happens and so therefore more of it happens and pretty much you you've jumped into the river and you just let go and you, you just, just let, ride the the current it. yeah and it's so thrilling yeah it's pretty amazing it's pretty amazing when you live in that sort of inspired way rather than living by a to-do list you know it's pretty amazing you get a to-do list you know when you were talking a little while ago it was interesting because you were talking about you know check how often you check your cell phone and it's just funny that like as I'm checking it right now. <laughs> oh, no, it's just, it's just funny how like our mind itself is such a chatterbox, right? Like Eckhart Tolle talks about this, disconnecting from your mind. And it just goes, 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 goes. I got to do this, got to do that, got to do this. And it just goes all day long, judging yourself, labeling other people, putting judgments and thinking about what you have to do. And it just goes on incessantly, your mind. Mm. And it's so bizarre because our mind, if we had no cell phones, our minds would still do that. You're right? right. But then on top of that, that's one layer on top of the sandwich. And then we put the cheese on top and the cheese is checking our cell phone 60 times a day for more stuff to get ourselves uncomfortable with ourselves because we know we have to do other stuff. Like you see something and you check your text like, oh shoot, I've got to, I got to get back to that person. And so that threw and, you off your, your yeah, game. Let me add that to the already existing 7,000 things that I have in my mind that I have to do. Let me add this new thing. And it's weird that we like, we yeah. continually seek out something that's going to make us more un, happy with our lives totally we unnerving seek and out, overwhelmed why do we seek that out we seek know. out more confusion and more to Chaos. do or more disconnection like it's weird because we are if we had no cell phones we would already have enough to make ourselves go crazy but yet we seek something else that will add more things to that crazy it's wow. so bizarre right why do we do that i think I don't know. Maybe because we're just disconnected and unhappy. I think it's disconnection from nature. And want to stay busy, right? Well, time stopped on my retreat. Like the days seem really long, which is awesome. And then sometimes you'll, you struggle with the thought of, am I going to be bored? Like, can I do this for three days? Three mm -hmm. days is nothing, right? Right. And you love it and all this magic is happening. But in the back, you still have this gnawing question of, am I going to be bored? Is this going to bore me? Am I getting bored? Really? Yeah. And then when I come home, I would do anything for that boredom. So I realized hmm. it's almost like we're a glutton for punishment. We we know that we could fall so deeply 
in love with nature and being in that in that boredom place of boredom wouldn't become it's almost like we know at some point no you're not going to get bored this this is this is life here out in mm-hmm. nature and observing wild animals and by a creek and and this is in being in my head and this is all good things but then you come home and i think that it uh it confuses you but then you miss the boredom so i think to me it's just being disconnected from nature is the problem mm-hmm. and that just completely invites the chatter monkey brain right back yeah because when you're uh disconnected you're detached from anything that has any real meaning so you're living in this world of fictitious bills and fake money fake and numbers fake, in your bank account fake numbers in your bank account politicians that are fake and this fake debt and all this weird stuff that's all fake but you're so disconnected from nature that you're just living in this weird world that um, you, that that's constantly driven by activity, to, to, do. to do list, keeping yourself busy, productivity, and putting mm-hmm. value and worth on how productive you are. Um, and I, I, I don't know. It's just not healthy. It's we got to get back to some sort of yeah nature and being connected with God and living a natural life and eating natural foods that our body loves and. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just weird. It, it, I don't know. Cause when, you know, they have a labyrinth at this retreat center and every time I step foot in, you're just like, Oh, I'm centering. I'm like journeying to the center of the sacredness, you know? Right. And I'll tell you what, the last thing you're thinking about is your water bill. You know, right. the things we are consumed with in our everyday life, because we have a certain responsibility and, you know, we want a comfortable life and we have to keep the, the this crazy wheel going to some extent. But when you're walking, when you're walking in nature and you're surrounded by oak trees and you see a squirrel and you see a beautiful stone wall, the last thing you're thinking about is, yeah, what, when you have to pay your cell phone bill. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Why is that? Because you're just in, wrapped up in the moment. You are. I think to me, that's truly being in the moment. And mm-hmm. I get very sad and jealous of people who can live like that all the time. <laughs> well, I met a, a woman that runs, um, or she doesn't run the retreat center, but there's a bigger, there's a lot of different retreats on this particular um, piece of land. And I was in the big old stone house and uh, I was sitting in the library reading this book. And this girl came in from the outside and she'd been sitting in the sun and she had a cup of coffee and she walked through the library and she said, Oh, I'm sorry to, you know, interrupt you i said no no how's the sun you know we start chatting and i said oh are you on retreat and she goes where are you staying and i said oh up th- you know the other the other house and she goes and i said oh are you on retreat here too and she goes no i live here and i go oh you live here <laughs> and i was like how do i live here you know and yeah. she goes yeah and i go it's pretty amazing and she goes i'm i love it i'm never leaving and it's i know she still has a job and that didn't look like she was she looked like she was on her day off or her time off mm-hmm. or whatever but wow I mean, you could tell something in her just she knew she found gold and she was going to hold on to it forever because mm-hmm. she in general, even though she has to have a job and get things done, just being in surrounded by a nature and a nature type situation and people who are on a spiritual path, mm-hmm. there's got to be no better feeling in the world. Yeah. You know, it's, wow. if you died, I'd become a nun. <laughs> Mark my word. Couldn't have any sex with you, no. <laughs> that might be okay at that point because what you get in return yeah. is so worth it. Yeah, it's funny when when you th- when you said that because I was thinking like how you can create that inward sort of peace and calmness all you want until the cows come home to the end of your life. But I think that like if you're able, to, if you have a desire for peace and you love that kind of way of living, and you cultivate that inwardly Mm -hmm. and to the let's say you're able to cultivate that to the extent that a human being can cultivate that inside themselves so that looks like maybe a jesus or or i don't know some sort of spiritual enlightened master who's able to reach that level within themselves right no matter where you live but you seek out that sort of montecito kind of lifestyle i think that you can live like that internally and be in the city but if that's what your real desire is, some people love the city. Right. But some people they really, thrive. they do a bunch of spiritual work, but they live in the city, but they want to live in the country or the, on the coast or something like that in nature. Um, I think that no matter how much deep spiritual work you do inside of yourself, if you're living in the wrong environment or you're with the wrong person or you're doing the wrong kind of work, until you go to the place where you really belong, 
then the two become one. Like it's like a magnet they're pushing apart and you're good. You're a magnet and you, you've done all the work and you're fine. But once you connect with something that you really connect with, boom, you just slap right onto it and, mm-hmm. and you, you now have the deep in, in spiritual work inside and you live in the place that's, that facilitates what you really want. To- totally. You know I mean? That makes complete sense. And so sense. it becomes a wholeness. So you're not sort of like, I'm doing all this spiritual work. Um, I hate the city and I hate noise. I hate l- l- loud buses, but I live in the city and, and I, and I act like a Gandhi or a Jesus. Mm-hmm. But when you're able to do that, if you really desire to live in the country and you actually do all that spiritual work and then you go and live in the country, it's like this marriage of two things that you really, one that you worked on and the other one that you recognize through your own intuition that that's the kind of person you are. So you gravitate to the environment that's going to facilitate that. And I think that when you stop fighting what you really want yeah. and you go after something that you really want, like maybe one day we'll live in Montecito. I know. And we'll have our stuff there because I think that would be an amazing place. I really <sighs> crave that sort of simplicity and, and, and you know nature. When you, you know when you find a place, um, like what you just said reminds me of, it, it feels like a return home mm-hmm. to somewhere you've never lived, but you know that there's, there's something in it that touches you and that you feel connected to and you can't mm-hmm. explain it to anybody. And that's maybe why all the people that live there, most of them are pretty deep spiritual kind of people. Probably. It's yeah, very conducive to that type of a... Yeah. Whew, deep conversations. Deep conversations. We got, we're going to wrap up with two quick emails here. Okay. And writes in, you two have come a long way in knowledge since you first started. It's funny. I don't feel like I have. Wow. Maybe I have. Maybe we have. I like the questions you asked Dr. Bergman. I'm from Palm Beach, Florida, and just did a first phone consultation with Dr. Bergman. I know a lot about natural health after doing 11 liver flushes via the Andrea Andreas Moritz amazing liver flush. By the way, when you mentioned a book a second ago. Yeah. Did you tell people what book uh, you're getting on Amazon here pretty soon, or do you want to reveal that? I will reveal that in the future. <laughs> okay, because she mentioned the book. Um, she did 11 liver flushes. Wow. wow. And citing myself um, of severe asthma and psoriasis plus much more, but I didn't know how effective chiropractic was until I listened to Dr. Bergman. He is amazing. I love your shows, and I email them to my friends and family. You two are doing a great job, And Right on. Oh, and then the picture... <laughs> Oh, you saw that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Picture of her and her dog. Enzo Thanks, Anne. Going to the dog park. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Enzo. Maggie says hi. <laughs> Maggie's down there says hi. That's amazing, Anne. Thank you. Um, and uh, Henry writes in one last question. Um, I was introduced to your site just last night. And before retiring, I got halfway through episode 413, the infamous 413 on spirituality. I love it. Thank you for saying what so many of us have been discouraged from thinking and believing, mm. but knew in your heart to be true. As I am getting restarted, what's that? 11, 11. Oh, 11, 11. Oh my gosh. Wow. It's 11, 11 right now. Um, <laughs> of course, funny. right? First time I happened to catch it when my phone lights up and you're reading this. And First time I, I listened, I looked at the clock the in whole the time. In the flow, in the flow. 11, 11. Mm-hmm. Thank you for saying that um, as I'm getting restarted this morning the following facebook page via raising ecstasy jumped out at me quote remember the entrance door to the sanctuary is within you is this not perhaps the key the message of christ i look forward to being a visitor of your extreme health radio quote path in case it might help you with future programming i receive great benefit by being uh by being on the nigerian Nicker, yeah, I didn't know how you say that. N i c h i r e n Buddhism path before finding my home in lo- in a local science of mind community. You will very likely also enjoy having a program on the Jefferson Bible. Yes, our Thomas Jefferson, and it was given to new members of Congress for years. Namaste, Henry. Oh, See, there you go. There's another rabbit hole. Just, I was going to say, just when you think your rabbit holes are. A little bit uh, gone down. You have a whole set of new ones. I've never heard of Nichiren Buddhism or the mm. Jefferson Bible. No. Well, there you go. You have some things to look up. You got bioenergetics we talked about, dynamic I'm Google meditation. Jefferson Bible. The Jefferson Bible. We'll put all this stuff in the show notes. So thanks, everybody, for uh, for joining us on our little path, our little journey. Thanks here. for listening to our ramblings on life. And our ramblings. That was fun. It was. Thanks. Yeah, we had a good talk. Fire it up, fire it up. Started off with politics and went to spirituality. What do you know? (laughs) (laughs) They're all intertwined. How can they not be?
All of life. All of life. So um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. So really appreciate that. Please send this show to your friends, um, anyone who you think will enjoy what we talk about um, on our show or our Facebook. Please share our Facebook posts if you can. That would be very helpful. And I also want to thank every one of you who is donating to us on Patreon. You guys are so kind. We really appreciate it so much. You can donate on a per-podcast basis. And if you have a Facebook account, you can sign up. It takes about a minute to donate to our show and to keep our work going because we have a lot of bills to pay and we have to live in the real world and we have to buy uh, groceries and buy food for Maggie and turn our lights on. So um, (laughs) keep our lights going. So we appreciate you guys uh, supporting everything that we're doing. If you can do that, we would greatly appreciate it so, so much. And thanks for visiting our store and making our work possible. We've got tons of great products in our store, Vitamix blenders, um, juicers, um, biomats, saunas, rebounders, all kinds of fitness equipment and supplements uh, that we take and that we recommend. So if you can remember to go to our store often, we'd appreciate that. Um, is that it? I think that might be a wrap. That's a wrap, people. The people, the good people. The good people. All right, we everyone. We love you guys. Episode 419, is that right? 419. We'll put everything in the show notes for episode 419. You can get there by going to extremehealthradio.com slash 419. Nine for anything that we talked about today. Whew. Whew. That's it, right? Yeah. Love you guys. That was a lot of fun. All right. We'll catch you guys on the next show. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is Josie, Justin's mom. Don't tell him, but I know he would absolutely be really happy if you would sign up to his free weekly newsletter. And don't forget to share this with all your friends. This is the buzzing bumblebee signing off. Oh my gosh. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition.